It's a definition of faith, sorry. Faith is not the absence of fear. Courage is not the absence of fear. Mm. Faith and courage is you overcoming your fear. Amen. So the American Coast Guard, they go into some pretty hairy, scary situations to rescue people. And they understand that they're, they're, they're scared as anything. They could die today. You know? But they jump into the unknown. They take a risk to save the person. You know? And so true courage is not absence of fear. If you learn this, you'll become an overcomer. Amen. Yeah. Because there's times, you know, I remember on the mission field, I, I had... I was told that the Public Security Bureau was uh, tracking me. They had a, uh, this guy that was following me from the People's Liberation Army. They had spies. They were, um, knew where I was going and, and bugging the room. And, and it's like thinking, who is it? You know, this, they pretend to be your friend and they come alongside you and you've got to work out who is the spy and who is the real deal. That's what missions in Tibet was like. And, um, and, and, and I remember one day I, was, I had no spit left because, you know, I was, I was scared spitless. <laughs> Literally, it's true. Because it's just that they're watching you. I just got told by someone they're watching you right now. Be very careful. And and then I just was reminded the Spirit of God. Faith is not absence of fear. It's overcoming your fear. So I just had to overcome my fear and my worry and keep obeying God. Amen. Faith is not the absence of doubt. You can have doubts. Just don't listen to them. That's the key. Don't listen to the voice of your own fear and doubt. Listen to the voice of the Lord and just keep obeying. Amen. So Paul is here saying, pray also for me. What is this? He's saying, not only am I going to pray for myself, I am this, uh, this is Paul speaking, not me. I am this awesome uh, apostolic missionary and, and I teach on spiritual warfare. I'm taking the church and I'm planting the church in unreached territories and I'm taking on demonic powers over cities. You know, Paul was an amazing guy. Mm. Paul's ministry was powerful. And then Paul is saying, please, can you pray for me? Mm. Because he wouldn't ask for them to pray for him that he could proclaim the mystery of the gospel fearlessly as he should if he wasn't struggling with fear. That's it, yeah. Do you ever think about that? Mm. Please pray for me that I would be fearless. Why? Do you have a fear problem? No, I'm perfectly good, thank you. <laughs> so why bother praying? No, like, like, seriously, we've got to understand that these apostles that were going out there, Paul knew that he could be imprisoned. He was beaten up many times. He was stoned, left for dead. He was, he was facing uh, beatings. Uh, I think that you would get a little bit worried too. Oh, yeah. Hey, let's go out. We're going to go and do uh, some evangelism out of the local mosque. And by the way, the last time we went there, they beat us up. Are they coming? Mm. No, I'm just serious. Like, when we really follow Jesus, I tell you what, it can be a terrifying experience. Jesus will take you to places when you follow him. And there is risk. I heard one person say, faith is spelt R-I-S-K. <laughs> Unless you take a risk in following. And so Jesus, when you really follow him, he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's courageous and he'll just take you to scary places. <laughs> yea, that I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil for he is with me. But it is pretty scary there. <laughs> So he's saying, whenever I open my mouth, I want you to pray that whenever I open my mouth, I can proclaim fearlessly the mystery of the gospel. I want to be able to be able to explain clearly the gospel message. Please pray for me for God's enabling power. Paul was praying for himself, I believe, regularly. Lord, give me more faith. Help me proclaim this message clearly. Help me be accurate in my presentation. And he's asking others, please pray for me. Now, Paul did that. We should. Yeah. We should pray for one another regularly. That we'd be able to fearlessly follow Jesus. That we'd be able to courageously obey him in every situation. Amen. And that we would be a people that would have understanding to proclaim the mysteries. Amen. To proclaim the message of God to people in a clear way. He goes on. I'm an ambassador in chains, like I shared. You know, even though I'm in chains, you can chain my body, but you can't stop me preaching the gospel. You know? And there's some stories coming out from the Middle East. 
some powerful stories where these Christians are about to be martyred, you know, and they get these little children and they line them up and told them to deny Jesus and, and, then, and they'll, they'll be rescued. And the little children refused to deny Jesus and they were killed. That's happening now. Hearing other stories where this one guy is about to be killed, he turns around to the ISIS member and he says, I know that you are going to kill me. But I want you to know that I forgive you. I want you to know that I'm going to heaven anyway. And I want to see you there. And I know that I'm, I don't have time to read the Bible to you. But please take my Bible and read it. And apparently the guy took the Bible secretly and read it. and got saved. Um, I'm hearing these types of testimonies now. Children, by the way, people. And we're worried about someone laughing. Yes, that's right. We're worried that someone might misunderstand us. We've got to really start to dig into fearless faith. Mm -hmm. And again, fearless faith is really overcoming your fear. Because <laughs> it will be there. I know, I was on the mission field. Those times that um, they, they, drew, they drew swords and knives to kill me one day and um, I've been sharing the gospel and they were all drunk and they got angry at me and started accusing me of blaspheming the Dalai Lama and these guys circled me with swords and knives to kill me. And I'm not, I'm not really scared of, of dying. To be really honest, I know as a Christian, if I die, I'm going to be with the Lord. So dying, I'm not scared of. It's just, it's going to hurt. <laughs> Seriously, I'm thinking to myself, I'm, they're yelling and screaming, the knives are out, and I'm just thinking... Oh, like the first thing I said in my prayer is, Lord, this is going to happen. <laughs> I didn't know what to pray in English, so I praise God for tongues. Because when you don't know what to pray, you just start praying in tongues. I'll tell you what. And some of you heard the testimony. I was just there, and, then, and I was just praying in tongues. And the next minute I realized the whole restaurant was quiet. They weren't yelling anymore. And I opened my eyes because I felt this cloud. I've heard of the Shekinah glory, the cloud of glory. It's, it means weight of heaviness, and it's true. This weight of heaviness, I felt it on my head and on my body. The glory of God came into the restaurant. And I opened my eyes and all these guys were quiet and they're looking at me like this. Because I'm just going, shut up, I don't want to. They're like, put away their knives, went back and sat down. Nobody said anything. So I got up and said, I'm going to go now, bye. <laughs> That's true. Fearless messenger. And I went back home, and I remember I was, I was like this, I was shaking, you know. <laughs> I, I almost got killed. And almost met Jesus, but I don't want to meet Jesus that quickly. <laughs> I want to get married first. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so I go back, and I say to the other people, like, I just went to the other missionaries in the room, and said, oh, this is what just happened. And they're all going, hallelujah, praise God, we're suffering for Jesus, they pray for me. I'm thinking it's really easy for you to hallelujah. <laughs> and I went back to my room and I'm sitting there going, God, what do you want me to do now? You know what God said? Go back out to the street and go back out and talk to them. Wow. And so I went back and I saw them and I went straight up to them. And they all looked at me and I started sharing about Jesus. <clears throat> that was a Glen that is not the Glen that I am. That is a grace of God. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I turned on the key. Mm. Yeah. I didn't really have a choice. Like I, I figured that I can't run away. They're all around me. I'm going to die anyway, so I might as well pray. <laughs> <clears throat> so pray for me, that I, an ambassador in chains, that I may declare fearlessly the gospel as I should. Let's go back to 2 Timothy chapter 1. <clears throat> Some of our greatest testimonies, we're going to stand before the throne of God and say, you tricked me. <laughs> and really, It's like that guy that the ocean liner going through the Atlantic and uh, this child fell into the water in, the, in a really rough ocean and everyone's going, oh my goodness, little child. And, and this guy jumps in, swims out, rescues the kids so they go and give him the life, little 
I don't know what they call them, those round things and pulling back on the boat. And everyone's like, wow, you're just amazing. You know, you're, you're really courageous. You know, you jumped in the water. You could die in there, you know. And it's really cold and rough ocean. And, and he said, I've just got one question. Who pushed me? <laughs> so there's, there's times, by the way, the angel will be there. <laughs> and you've got no choice. It's like, I'm, I'm just going to go out looking good or I'm going to go out looking bad here. Anyway, unless you've been in these situations, you won't know what to talk about. Ah, hallelujah. So don't be ashamed to testify about our Lord or ashamed of me as prisoner, but join me in my suffering for the gospel by the power of God, who has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we've done, but because of his own purpose and grace. And this grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. The whole grace of God, the whole message of the gospel, it's not by our works, it's by His grace. It's, we're actually proclaiming who He is and what He's done. And He enables us to proclaim that message. But we need to agree to partner. By faith we partner with Him. It says, but now this gospel has been revealed... Through the appearing of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Of this gospel, I've been appointed as a herald, as a messenger, and an apostle, a sent one, and a teacher. That's why I'm suffering as I am, yet I'm not ashamed, because I know whom I have believed and I am convinced that he's able to guard what I've entrusted to him for that day. So I want to finish this message by reminding you, number one, you have been appointed as messengers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Do not think to yourself, it's only the full-time pastor or it's only the full-time evangelist. Every one of us has been appointed as a messenger. It's just that some of us aren't doing it. We've all been appointed to be apostolic sent ones. And we've also all been appointed to be teachers. We are here to proclaim and to teach the words of the Lord to one another and to those that do not know it. If we are ashamed, it will disempower us. It will take our strength from us. If we give in to fear and worry, it will disempower us. We've got to learn to stop listening to the voice of our hearts and minds, the fears and the doubts and the discouragements, because that will cause you to trip up. You cannot fulfill your assignment like that. Listen to His voice and obey His voice. Live to please Him. Even though men are not pleased with you and people laugh at you or despise you, live for His pleasure. Live for His praise. Amen. There's times on the mission field, I tell you what, I was going through some very hard times, even when missionaries being rejected and misunderstood. I remember just being before the Lord, really discouraged one day, and the Lord would just said to me, Glenn, I want to say something to you. And I said, what do you want to say? And he said, thank you. <laughs> so what do you mean? He said, I want to just thank you for who you are and what you're doing. Mm. And I believe you're doing a good job and keep it up. And it's just that simple thing broke fruit, you know. Heavenly Father, we come before you this day. And we say it's not by works that any man could boast, but it's by your grace that we receive by faith. We do need faith because we need to turn on the key. We do need faith because we need to trust in you. Those that trust in the Lord will not be put to shame. Amen. Lord, forgive us that we follow our fears and we follow our doubts and we follow our worry and our anxiety and we, we kill the fire. Lord, this day I ask that you breathe your breath of life on the fire, that you help us. Help us fan into flame this fire, this gift. In Jesus' name, amen.